This uh, tutorial is over delimiters and the whole concept of delimiters here, let me turn off my sound here, otherwise I might get some distortion. I'm not hearing anything. Well, I'm assuming it's working. So anyway, on the delimiters, um, let's just go ahead and flesh out a program like you normally make. Include Biostream using namespace std and hopefully you guys have already done this. Anytime we start a project this is going to be the first thing that you do. Just clean this up. Yeah, just make it look like it has to. And we're good. Now what I'm going to do here is I am going to say C out quote enter a sentence. I did this yesterday, I know, but I didn't show you this. So now I'm going to say get line and I'm going to take input into a string which I'll call my string and normally I take everything up to where you hit the return key and then I'll say C out my string and L. Well, what you have to do is you have to include a string header if you're going to start using string variables. It's the only variable type that's pretty common that you have to include a header for, and the reason is they are objects. Okay, so if you create a string, it's an object. That was also true in Visual Basic. So I'm going to just say string here to get that. And now my code should be okay. Let's go ahead and just try to rebuild it right here to see if there's an issue. Oh, never declared the variable. So string, my string. You guys probably caught that. And now these errors should go away. So if you want to take an input on the whole string, if I run this now, what you're going to see is, of course, we can take input on an entire string. So I'll say, hello there, and you get the whole string. Now, if I change the delimiter, I can actually say, take it up to this character if I want. How about if I just write a space? The first time I type a space, it's going to take input up to there, but no further. You can actually say what the limit is for letters you're going to take. That's why we call it the delimiter. So if I run this, now if I say hello there, it'll take the word hello, but you'll never see the word there. You can even choose specific letters, like first time I type an E, We'll say that's the delimiter. Let's go ahead and run that. Now, typically, delimiters do have the backslash character. You're going to have that. So if I say hello there, you'll notice the first thing I type with an E is that second letter in the word. Watch what happens now. Does that make sense? You all see what the delimiter is doing? Now, there's other kinds of ways we can take strings. I'll copy this line here, and I'll put it here. That kind of cleans up one idea for taking input where you have spaces and stuff. There is another way. You can declare a char array. I'll call this my char array. And then I'll say, just like I did here, enter a sentence. And I think the best way to do this is, let's make this an array. To make it an array, you put square brackets here and you say how many characters you're going to take. Now this will take up to 99 characters. Actually, it takes 100 characters exactly. But 
but one has to be the null terminator. That's what all strings and character arrays end with, so that when we do a C out, it knows what to output to. The input here is quite a bit different than what we did here. This is for an object, so if we do it for a character array, I think the best way of doing it is to say cn.get. We have a couple options. First thing you put here is what the name of the array is, which is my char array. And then you say up to how many characters? Well, I can take up to 100 characters. Actually, 99 is all you can write. And then i got to have that null terminator to end it. And then I'll say I'll take everything up to the new line character where you hit the return key. And that really is a character that you have. Now, always, if you use cn.get, you have to flush it. You have to flush the unwanted characters, because maybe you just entered three characters. You're going to get rid of all the rest. So to do that, you write cn.ignore. I want you to know this one. Know how to take input on sentences both ways. You're going to put it, uh, you'll say, flush up to 200 characters, which is more than enough to handle this job. Boy, it only has to flush 100. We just write some arbitrary big number there, and it gets rid of all those unwanted characters. If you don't have this, what will happen is, next input, it will blow by. You won't even see it take input on a CN statement. without this. So now I can go ahead and output this and I can say C out my char array and L. So what's going to happen now is it's going to ask me for two sentences and I'll be able to take input and it'll be pretty hard to see in the way that the uh, program functions the difference between the two but you can see that the code is really different. So I'll say hello there just to prove that I've got a space there. And then, look at that, we blew by anyway. You see that? didn't even allow me to take input using this cn.get statement. Uh, what's the issue? Usually on get line, oh, right, I had a whole bunch of unwanted characters. The point was just made. I have E here, and that's causing issues. It is. When I typed hello there, it took uh, everything up to the E, and all those other characters were just out there looking for something to get into. So it just slapped it into the cn.get without even allowing me to check input. So this is an excellent example of that. To improve this program, we better do it up to the new line character where you hit the return character. Let's go ahead and see what happens now. Usually on get line, you do not have to flush on the next line. But there are some rare cases, especially like if you're doing functions and stuff, you have to. So I'll say hello there. You can see that works. Now I'm able to take input. I'll say I love my goldfish. Period. And it'll output all of that. So you can see it works either way. The trick is you've got to flush. Now, if there are no characters to flush, um, then you'll get a hang. The cn.ignore will cause your program to stop there until you hit your return key. So if nothing happens, try hitting your return key. Now, there is a second way I can take input into a character array. Here comes another way I can do it. I'm going to use the same array. You can use get line. Usually if you use get line it is unnecessary to flush on the next line. Well, I don't really like that. I like knowing exactly what I'm getting into. So cn.get for most things with the cn.ignore to flush on the very next line. I think that's the best way to go. Okay? Because you know exactly what you're getting into. Get line, if there's some unwanted characters as you just saw before, they can screw you up. This will always work, okay? So that's really a nice way to go. Don't forget, this thing here is the delimiter, usually with a backslash. In fact, your book says you always have a backslash. But I also see it as being up to a certain character. You're going to take input, and then you're going to disregard everything else. Please know those two ways of doing input. This concludes this tutorial.